Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Do you ever ask yourself, will my prepping supplies still work? We know that things expire, they wear out, they degrade, so it's important that you go through your prepping supplies and you check them over, and if things need to be replaced, that you do that. I was thinking about some of the items in my prepping stockpile that might be questionable and I want to make sure that they work and that they're useful, that they're still good. So I thought I would go over a few of those items that I've been inspecting and see if maybe it's something that you want to inspect in your supplies also. We all have lots of flashlights. Do you have extra batteries? We know that the batteries die and some of them are very useful like this one because it has a USB charging port. So what can you do to make sure that it's still gonna be good? Charge it occasionally, just like you would your other items. You can even get a little solar panel, you can get an external battery pack. There are all types of gadgets and gizmos that can help you keep your gear ready to go. If you don't have a stockpile of batteries, make sure that you get them and choose ones that are useful to you. I have almost everything is AA and AAA, so I have lots and lots of these. A strategy that I've been using is to store my batteries in a plastic ammo box or can. I know that it's pretty airtight, I know that it's waterproof, and I know that it's sturdy, it holds a lot of weight, it has a nice handle, and I can set it easily away on my shelf and it's organized. Make sure that you label it batteries so that nobody thinks they're heading to the gun range with an extra box of ammo. Maybe you have emergency camping stoves or lanterns. Do you have the fuel that goes with those? Do you have a propane heater? Maybe you need some fuel canisters to go with that. Always be checking your stockpile. Make sure that you have plenty of these and be on the lookout for them. They're getting harder and harder to find. And if these are going to be a type of fuel that you rely on, you need to make sure that you have plenty of backups. Do you plan to use candles or lanterns? Make sure that you have plenty of lighters on hand. Also make sure you have matches, and I like the long utility lighters. Some of them you can check in the window that they still have fuel in them. Make sure that they do. They're useless without fuel, and the fuel can evaporate or disappear or be gone. You want to be checking on these occasionally to make sure that they're still useful. Most matches won't continue to work if you allow them to get wet. So make sure you store them in some kind of a waterproof container and then check them occasionally to make sure that nothing has penetrated into these that could have damaged them. Have a stockpile of everyday lighters. One of the tricks that I do to help it last longer is to put a piece of tape over the end. Also, if you want to know how much fuel is still in your lighter, you can hold it in front of a bright light or even a flashlight and you can see how much fuel is in your lighter. Check your tape. I've had tape turn into a big solid wad ball and I couldn't get it off at all. It wasn't even useful. And yes, I've had it for quite a few years, but many of us do have lots of prepping supplies. We've been prepping for years, so check over your tape because you don't want to find out when you need it that you can't get it off the roll and it isn't useful anymore. So check over all of your tapes and make sure they're still in good satisfactory condition. Glue is the same thing. I like to buy the little individual packs of super glue because I find once you open them, it's like you can never get them to work right again. But I've also discovered that the little tubes can completely dry up just sitting in the shelf. And so we want to make sure that your glue is still okay. I recently had to replace just the regular Elmer's type glue because when I picked one up and I squeezed it, the bottle disintegrated. It had been around so long the bottle became brittle and it just crunched and cracked and I had to replace it. Think about the products you use for health and hygiene. Things like sunscreen actually don't last very long and that's one of the problems. I've stocked up on lots of these because I always think I'm going to use more in the summer and then the next year sometimes you open it, it doesn't smell right it's separated, it's runny, and then it needs to be thrown away. But you wouldn't know that if you just let it sit on the shelf and you didn't check it and inspect it. So go over the liquids and ointments and creams because some of them, the tubes will begin to get greasy. They just don't last forever. Now, I know that people like to say medicines do last forever, but not necessarily because the containers that they're in 
can degrade and then you don't have a useful product. So it's better to not just expect things to last forever, but to inspect them and then replace them if you need to. Look over your pills and medications. Maybe you've been using a lot of them because it's been stressful and you've had a lot of headaches and so you've been using your pain reliever. You need to make sure you have a nice supply of backup, all kinds of the different kinds of medicines that you use. And then make sure that they're all reasonably up to date. And yes, things do last longer, but not always. It's so annoying when you go to your cupboard and find out that the things you've been storing aren't good when you wanted them. But it does happen, and so you need to keep checking on your things and rotating them, replacing them. Bleach is another item that degrades over time and then it doesn't have the full potential to do the things that you want of sanitizing or using it to clean your water. So you want to just open it up and sniff it. Does it still smell like bleach? If not, you need to start thinking about replacing it. And you want to make sure that you get plain, ordinary, unscented bleach. Don't get one with scent. Don't get splashless. Those are not the same. You want just plain old ordinary bleach. Make it a point to learn how much bleach you would use to purify water. Write it down, store it with your bleach. Make sure you have an eyedropper so that you can use it into your containers if you need to. Solar lights are so handy. You can charge them up in the daytime, bring them in your house. I like to store them even with my portable toilet in with the extra supplies so that if I have to get out the portable toilet and use it, I have a fresh new solar light that I can activate with those. If you have to sneak out and use your porta potty in the dark when you're camping or bugging out, don't you want to be able to find it? So having a little light can be extra handy. I also store these with the tab still in them because once you pull the tab, you've activated it and it immediately will work. If you pull the tab ahead of time, then the battery will run down and then it needs to be charged again before you can use it. So if your first use was at night, you could have a problem if you can't activate your light. You would have to wait till the next day for it to get charged. If you have lots of solar lights, get something like a crate or a laundry basket. You can stick them all in, put them out in the sunlight, and charge them all up at once. Then you can bring them all back in and you have all the different kinds of lights to use in your home if there's no power. Think about your food. It's probably the prepping supply we have the most of. We have big prepper pantries and many people have big gigantic stockpiles. And so that's wonderful to have those things. But food also can degrade. It can expire. It can be no longer useful and good to eat. So you want to be keeping track of your food. If you have food like crackers, cereal, you need to make sure you store them into an airtight container and know that things like crackers and cookies, they're not going to last very long past the expiration date, if at all. You want to store them airtight, not in the cardboard container because they're going to get stale, they could get wet and ruined, and you could also have an infestation from pantry bugs. So you want to store them in an airtight container, but keep track of them because once they're stale, nobody wants to eat them. Check your bug out bag if you have things like the Hormel Completes that are little ready to go meals that they're supposed to go in the microwave, but they're already cooked. And if you can't put them in the microwave, you can still eat them. But these aren't going to last past the expiration date. I find that the quality will go down. I don't want to eat questionable food. So keep track of how many of these you have and try to rotate through them so that you have fresh ones. If you put something like this in your bug out bag, make sure that you make a note to replace that. You don't want to forget about the food in your bug out bag because you're too busy worrying about the food in your pantry and find that these are expired in a real emergency. You need to be able to have food that you can count on. Look over your canned foods. Dust it off occasionally. Look and make sure that what the date is and try to rotate it within a reasonable amount of time after that date. Most canned foods can last past that date, but not always. You want to make sure nothing is bulging, nothing is leaking, nothing looks peculiar. And if you should open it and it spurts, you need to throw it away. Anything that looks off, throw it away. When in doubt, throw it out because it, there's no reason you should get sick over a few dollars worth of food. Some of the foodborne illnesses inside closed containers like botulism, 
They might be rare, but they're fatal. Look at your spices. Do you have backups? If you ever open your spice and it doesn't smell as strong as it used to, does that mean it's no good? No, it means you just need to add a little more. The spices lose some of their potency, but they can still last a long time. I like to buy the small containers because they're airtight. If you get a great big container and you use it, use it, use it, and there's just a little bit in it, it has all that air in the container which is helping to grade your spices. So for me, this is the size that I like because then I have a fresh jar more regularly than waiting to use up a big jumbo jar. If you repackage some of your foods into canning jars, you might want to take a good look, make sure everything still looks okay, and you don't see anything that is degrading or looks creepy in the jar. You also want to press on your lid, make sure that they're still sealed up if you used a food saver or an oxygen absorber. I like to repackage foods into jars like this. I do macaroni and cheese, rice aroni. I repackage them into clean jars with tight fitting lids so that they're airtight as possible. They're not degrading just in a cardboard box. Nothing can chew on them and then they're not going to be infested with pantry bugs. But still, they're not going to last forever. Packaged foods have many ingredients and so you can get a few years past the date on them, but not forever. So like this one, this one I need to rotate because it's getting a few years past and I don't want it to be wasted. And so you need to be keeping track of where you put things and what the dates are and then make sure that you're rotating them and replacing them. You also want to check your deep food storage, the foods that can last the longest. Maybe you put them into a jar, maybe you store them in a mylar bag, maybe you put them in a bucket. You want to check them over occasionally because the jars can crack, the lids can come loose, the mylar bags can get a hole in them, the buckets can even be chewed on. I even had squirrels chew through the five gallon buckets out at Granny Camp, which is my Alaska off-grid cabin. Anything can happen. You want to keep using your food, rotating it, replacing it, and adding to it if you feel like you need to have more. Only you know how much food that you would want so that you feel like you have enough. And remember, all of your stored food, you still are going to have probably food that you can still get at the store, and you probably have food in your refrigerator and your freezer you can add to these meals. Plus, we have the ability to grow a little bit of food, even if it's only in your windowsill. If you have a patio, a garden, that is wonderful. And so there are options to how to continue to add to your food that this isn't going to be the only food. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and there isn't any more food in the world. Likely we'll be able to get food nearly forever. It may not be the amounts, it may not be the products, and it may not be the prices that we want. So store up what you can, but don't think of just gloom and doom. The future doesn't have to be gloom and doom. We need to think positively, count our blessings and look forward with we'll be able to do the best we can and we will find ways to stretch this out and make the best of all of our situations. So go through your supplies, see that they're all still useful, nothing is expired, degraded, or just not useful anymore. Look over your prepping supplies. If you bought some stuff long ago and you don't really think that it's something you want to hang on to anymore, it's perfectly fine to replace it with something better that would be more useful to you. Don't hang on to things simply because you bought it. Hang on to things because you know that it's useful and it deserves a spot in your home. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.